Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, my social thread, my name's Crystal and today is my roundup of the month vlog, so everything that I have sewn up in the month of March which is quite a lot, I think I've done 13 items, 7 dresses for myself, a couple of items for my children and a couple of items as gifts for friends and family, so if that's something that interests you please do continue watching. Uh, first and foremost thank you so much to all my subscribers so far for all the comments that you leave on my videos and for those that follow me on Instagram it really does help uh, to get my content out there which is really really lovely thank you very much um, so first and foremost what I'm wearing I'm wearing the closet core Nyx dress which I'm sure most of you have heard of um, it's this pattern over here it's a Nyx dress by closet core so as you can see it's a lovely sort of flowy summery boho type dress You've got um, a v-neck um, bodice. It's got a button placket at the back with loops for the instead of buttonholes. It's got a yoke at the top here with gathers at the top of the bodice. Gathered sleeves, bishop sleeves here, gathered, um, what's this called, sleeves, uh, sleeve cuffs. Then it's a three-tiered skirt. Um, elastic at the waist here so it's really really lovely and I have made this um, with the plans of wearing it after pregnancy but funnily enough it fits me very well during pregnancy which is really great because of the elasticated waist and also it is quite uh, there is a lot of ease in this pattern so it's quite a loose fitted garment which is nice for pregnancy post pregnancy and also for the summer as well uh, so you've got the two options there you've got the dress version obviously with the tiers you can um, mix and match the lengths of the tiers you could do two tiers if you wanted or you could do the one tier and lengthen that if you wanted again with the sleeves you've got a short sleeve option as you have here and then you have the option to also do a peplum style blouse <clears throat> So closet core patterns, I really like them. Their instructions are really um, well thought out, in my opinion. Oh, here are the, um, the variations. There you go, I'll show you the line drawings. So that's exactly what I've said. Um, it's, um, it's not a facing. Is it a facing? No, it's not a facing. It's um, This is the yoke, the back of the yoke here. And then it's bias bowed neck that goes down to the front of the bodice. So that's um, sort of UA. View is the peplum style blouse. And you can also have a blouse without the buttons at the front and without the peplum. Uh, and the sleeves are interchangeable and the skirt um, tiers are obviously customizable. So, um, pattern, what's it called? Um, sizing, sizing. So this one goes from a size, size zero to a size 32 obviously it comes in two different bands you get the 0 to 20 or the 14 to 32 depending on your measurements I went for the 0 to 20 but there is a lot of ease in it so actually um, if I show tell you the finish measurements for the size 0 um, let's see finish measurements for the size 0 aha actually let me tell you what it's supposed to go up in so size zero would be a full bust of 31 inches waist of 24 inches hip of 33 inches all the way up to a size 32 which is a full bust of 60 inches waist of 53 inches and hip of 63 inches so that's sort of the measurements but when you look at the finished garment measurements there is a lot of ease for every single size so for a size zero, for example, which I would never be a size zero, uh, for a size zero, the bust would be 44.7. And now my bust at this current moment in time, being 33 weeks pregnant, is 41 and a half inches or 42 inches. So that's at least um, two, two and a half to three inches um, ease in the bust, which is actually normal, I think, for a, for a, for a dress, depending on how normal for a, for a, um, a dress with comfortable ease to be fair uh, the waist is 44 inches I don't have a waist um because of my my baby bump um and the hip is 44 inches so I could have actually made a size zero going by those measurements however having looked at other people's Instagram um posts and then I also watched Rachel from Stitched Up I watched her review on the um on the next dress and also I read people's comments on their Instagram posts of how many sizes they went down by um, most people have gone down by two sizes 
um and most people are, and some people actually have just gone by their bust by their bust size and just accepted sort of that billowy um uh, that billowy look um i will stand up in a bit and show you my dress so my dress is still quite billowy i went down to a size six so i should be a size i should be a size 12 actually according to this um by the bust according to the measurements i should be a size 12 but i went down to a size 6 and i think it's plenty roomy enough and the reason i didn't go down to a size 0 because i have done that in the past with a with a oversized shirt and i found that um sure the waist and the bust goes down but also sort of the um the width of the body so sort of the shoulder to shoulder gets narrower and i just didn't want it to be narrow at the top because um i've sized down so much so anyway i went for the size six and i'm quite happy with that um and i will tell you the um the amendments that i made to so fabric requirements it is quite a fab fabric hungry dress because of the bishop sleeves which are basically the billowy sleeves and also the three tiers of the skirt so the top two tiers are um two pieces of fabric and then the bottom tier is three pieces of fabric um obviously in expanding widths um so it does take in general, it says about four meters for a size. Um, well, it says a lot more here actually. It says five. It says five and a half. No, that's just looking at the wrong side. I'm sorry. Right. It says four point two five meters for this for the view A, which is the dress that I'm wearing, for a size zero to two, for a size four to. 20 4 to 20 4.75 meters on a 1.5 meter or 58 inch um width fabric i had four meters did i have four meters i did have four meters and it was fine it fitted perfectly and actually to be fair I could have probably um, used up less of the fabric if I was more economical with the fabric placement. So I suppose I would say just buy four meters if you're between, if you're a size, if you're a size, well, what was it? A size 12 downwards, I would say just buy four meters at that 58 inch um, width because there is actually plenty of room, um, in my opinion and so that's what i did in terms of my amendments the only amendments i did do was add length to the sleeve because i did watch as i say rachel from stitched up i watched her review on on the nyx dress and what she noticed on the instagram post as i did notice as well was that some of the sleeves of the other ladies that had made them were coming up quite short and i didn't really like that look i wanted to, it to be kind of have like well i'm standing up now if i can stand up to have sort of that um billowy puffiness at the end of the um at the end of my wrist and so i kind of copied rachel i know rachel is much taller than me and she always adds a leg to her sleeve and i thought i'm only five foot three i'm only going to add a little bit because i'm obviously not as tall as rachel <laughs> so i'll show you the sleeve um pattern piece um and that's how big the pattern piece is um, so it does it does require a lot of fabric so a normal sleeve would probably ha be half this size in width but because of the um, balloonliness if that's a word you need the extra width of the, of the fabric of the um, pattern piece so this pattern piece as you can see it ends here and then you're supposed to insert three pleats at the sleeve to um, gather it at the bottom. Now, what Rachel did, she omitted the, the pleats, which I have done as well, because the look, um, if you were to pleat it or to gather it like I just did. So I like basically just did a... Um, a little hem and i put some elastic and i and i gathered it up together it's the same effect with less work in my opinion so i just forgot about the the sleeve um the what are these called the pleats and then i just cut my um sleeve piece here at this end here. so i just used this a uh, lower um curve here and i straightened it off and i used that that was for my first version i found it was still a bit too short for me as in it was fine when i was just had my arms down but if i sort of moved and things it was a bit too short for me so for my second version which is this version i added an extra inch of um, paper to the bottom there and i think that's a good uh, the good compromise so i'm happy with that um so there were the two amendments i made to the sleeve uh, omitting the pleats and just doing an elasticated cuff as per the to the the buttons lyra dress for example and also adding um an inch probably two inches now 
to the bottom of the sleeve so I would say an inch and a half to the bottom of the lowest curve and that worked out well for me also with regards to the um the elastic in the waist it obviously tells you to measure your waist um, and see how comfortable that is on you uh, my waist was measuring at around 38 inches and um, but I only had 33 inches of elastic left in my haberdashery area in my sewing room and I just put that on and I just thought look I'll just put it on just so that I can photograph it blah 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 and actually the 33 inches including the one inch seam allowance was perfect so I guess it depends on the on the on the elastic if it's super stretchy or if it's a bit tighter than normal then but I mean the best way to do it is just to measure it around your waist see how comfortable it is add a seam allowance and then you're done and that's it really let me just close the sewing room door bear with me so I can stand up and show you my version here this is a viscose from first for fabrics i won it um well i i paid for some of it using a 10 pound voucher that i got for make of the month for last for last month um i think it was my um um alan anna allen anthea blouse dress in the chambray um that won the make of the month at, for first of fabrics so i got this uh, i got 10 pounds off this it's a lovely it kind of reminds me of william morris i'll step back a bit it's a William Morris type sort of print, navy and cream uh, in a viscose. And as I say, I got four meters of this. Um, I'll show you the yoke is here with the gathers. You've got the gathers at the sleeve. So I love this puffy um, sleeve head. Is it called a sleeve head? Yes. Then you've got the billowy arms, the lovely cuffs at the bottom there. Button placket with the um, hoops, loops. Um, obviously, my waist is really high because I have a bump but normally this would sit further down. So as my bump is here, the dress is sort of going up and the yoke of the dress is going backwards a bit. But obviously once baby has arrived, this will then go forward and the elasticated waist will go down as well. So it'll be a better fit. Um, I'll pop up some pictures of myself wearing it while I drink some water. And the other thing... Um, I wanted to add that it was odd that there was no pockets included in the pattern um, and I think maybe the reason why there was no pockets I mean pockets are very easy to add on but the reason why there was no pockets is because the length of this tier is quite short to put pockets on this side alone without going onto this tier so what I did instead is I constructed the skirt first and what I did is I what did I do so I added, I gathered um, this front piece um, and it gathered this front piece and added, added it to this front piece, top tier. And then I did the same for the back and then I added the pocket. So my pocket started from sort of here and ended just at the top of the second tier. And then I joined them together this side that way. So maybe that's the reason why they didn't put pockets because the space wasn't big enough. So anyway, I've just added pockets. And guess what? The pockets I used was the Tilly and the Butters Lyra pockets, which I love. Everything else was really good, easy to... Um, easy to follow you do need to use the burrito method to do with the full enclosure of the of the yoke um, so there is a couple of tricky items which I had to um, yeah so in Rachel's um, vlog she said that there were a couple of um, errors to the pattern um, her, the first error she said on her version said um, confident beginner hers was spelt wrong hers was spelt confident beginner but my version is is perfectly fine and also the other thing she mentioned was when you sew the bias binding to the neckline um this page here um when you fold it over you're supposed to cover all of your loops all neatly finished inside the bias binding she said her one didn't cover it at all so she was a bit annoyed by that and she thought there was a, a, a an error in the instructions i for some reason mine covered it and i think the reason why is you do have to be very careful and you have to clip your seam allowance to the right it says one eighth um I mean, one eighth of an inch is quite small, so you do have to be quite careful and clip it to that one eighth um, uh, seam allowance. And then when you fold your bias binding over, it perfectly covers the um, 
uh, center seam of the bodice and the loopholes um, very well. But just have to be careful with that because it is quite a small, it is quite a narrow, a narrow seam allowance. The only other thing is, oh, my gathers. So my gathers at the top here, you can't really see with this fabric, which is great, actually. So there are gathers here, but I don't know if you can see this one. This one is almost like a pleat which is I'm a, I'm a bit annoyed with, but you can't see it because of the fabric. Um, and I think it was just with the gathering, I just wasn't paying attention to making sure the gathers were even and I just kind of sewed across. Uh, and by the time I had turned it all inside out, all the right way out, it was just too much effort to unpick. Um, so the next time round, I am going to focus on getting those gathers nicely done. Uh, and that's it, I think. Oh, so... Um, on this page here, page 21, when you are attaching the yoke, it's just this bit here. Um, the front yoke and the back yoke have to be separated before you put the bodice in. Um, and just, just follow the instructions very, very carefully and, and you'll be fine. But I didn't at first and I had to unpick that and redo that. But it's a lovely dress. As I say, I've made two. This is my second version. And my first version is this one over here. This is my first version. So this is made up of on made up of made up in a leopard print viscose, which I got from um, Abacan Fabrics a long time ago. It was in my stash for ages and ages, and I did have four meters of this. And the, my original plan for this was the wilder gown, but then I made it and it didn't suit me, so I've never made the wilder gown again. So this is this version here, just black buttons. You've got the yoke there. I can show you the pleats. So the pleating on this one, not the pleating, the gathering on this one is much more even, which I like. There's the yoke there, gathers on the sleeve head, um, elasticated cuff instead of the pleats. So this one is the shorter version, which is as per the pattern. Um, so I've added another inch to this. Um, and then some pockets here. Hello pockets, where did you go? I've got my pockets in there and as you can see my pockets finish this is the first tier and the first tier ends there my pockets finish into the second tier and so that's why I had to do the front tier first before sewing down the sides um so I really really like this dress as well I'll pop up some photos of myself wearing it and that is the next dress um I would like to make some more of these, probably not for a while because it is, I've only got one more month before the baby arrives and when the baby arrives, I probably won't have time or probably won't want to sew, uh, but I will keep this in my stash definitely. Um, it's a definite lovely spring boho dress pattern to go for um, and I think, um, although I do love the bishop sleeves, I think for the summer it would be nice to have a short sleeve um, and then still the maxi length so then it's kind of like a maxi dress vibe. So that's that pattern there let me put it away as i go along so that i'm not all over the place and then the next dresses or dress that i made was the um so liberated hinterland dress and it was part of my uh, all set to sew so luxurious kit from little miss so and so that's always a mouthful to say so i am one of their brand ambassadors and i get one of their so luxurious boxes a month and the hinterland dress was in there I do actually have a separate vlog for the Hinterland dress. Um, so all of my um, So Luxurious um, subscription kits, I have a separate one. So um, you can see there how I choose the fabric and how I choose my patterns from all of the options that you get as part of a as part of uh, being a subscriber to the So Luxurious um, kit club. Uh, so the Hinterland dress is what I chose. And this is from So Liberated. So Liberated is there. That's their logo there. And essentially it is a dress, <laughs> a button front dress. So you've got the option of doing the button placket all the way down to the bottom of the dress. You can just have the bodice as the button placket or you can omit the button, button placket altogether if you want, although it doesn't have it as a variation here. It's got a tie at the back. You've got different sleeves, sleeveless, short sleeves, elbow length sleeves. And then it has, it doesn't have elastic at the waist and it's got a little turn up cuff at the, for the longer sleeves. Skirt is obviously adjustable as you please and does it have pockets it does have pockets but i still traced my lyra pockets and used my lyra pockets because they were slightly bigger than the pockets for this and you, everybody knows i love the lyra pocket size and the instructions for that as well so in terms of what i did differently let me have a look in my book my little 
project book has everything in here it's all a bit messy okay so I did the size 12 in the hinterland and again this is meant as a post-pregnancy dress uh, and it's got the lovely nursing access which is perfect for me because I breastfeed my children um but funnily enough it still fit me so that was really great I was able to I was able to take photos and model it for for Instagram so the things I did differently shall I show you my first version so my first version is this one here so this was the kit that I got from Little Miss So-and-So. It's a lovely cotton lawn from Lady McElroy. I'm not sure what it's called now, Savannah something. It comes in a black, is this a black? It comes in a black background and also comes in a cream background. In hindsight now, I wish, I've cho I, wish I had chosen the cream background because it would just be a little bit more summery. The reason I chose the black background was because I was making it in, um, in March and I thought it was a nice cross between sort of summer and summer and winter but um i mean it's still lovely and then i get the buttons sorry there's all the buttons down here um and with the kit you get all the notions needed you get the interfacing the buttons the fabric a gift the pattern um all for 65 pounds and it's luxurious fabric that you can choose from art gallery lady McElroy, atelier brunette that sort of thing so i really really like it um did i extend did i add some length to it Oh, okay, so the uh, let me show you some photos of myself wearing it. <clears throat> and the adjustments I made were the ties were thicker than I wanted. I quite like, um, are they called spaghetti ties or like rouleau loop ties? And because I have a, a turn, a loop turner by Prim, it's really, really great. Let me show you. And it uh, makes uh, making um, belt holes, not belt holes, um, ties and things very it makes ties and things very easy to do so it's like a little turner and a little thing and then you put it in and then you're able to reverse it out quite quickly so i just made the ties um narrower than normal and i'll show you the ties here so slightly narrower i think it was double that that length um, double that width as per the pattern would be double um pockets as i say i used the lyra button the lyra dress uh, pockets um and everything else was was great and um, the button placements I don't tend to um, copy the button placements I always try it on and where, wherever my apex is that's where I put the first button and then I rearrange the rest of the button placement according to where my apex um, where my apex button lies and I've only realized making that probably in the last year or so um, because um, no matter what you do if you don't have a button at the apex which is where your the widest point of your bra of your um breast so the apex would be here if you don't have it here you'll always have like a gaping hole and so that's what i do so i never follow the button placement it is bias bound at the neckline as i say that went in really really beautifully so i'm very happy with that the only thing that i would do which i haven't done yet because i've hacked the next two versions that i made um is the sleeve so this is i went for the three quarter length sleeves it was a bit snug on me i mean it was still it was still okay but if i was to do it again i would use a smaller seam allowance or maybe because i'm pregnant everything is bigger so i am a lot bigger arms are bigger everything is bigger so maybe post-pregnancy this would fit me a lot more looser than it does now also the cuff here you can see this cuff here i would um widen the width of the cuff so it would be double the width so it would come up to here and i also wouldn't sew it all the way around i would just do a little tack here and a tack at the bottom so it looks like a real kind of fold over cuff or roll over cuff if that makes Shh, I'm, I'm doing a vlog my love say hello Zander. hello yeah <laughs> um so that's what i would do if i was to make exactly the same uh, dress again as per the pattern and that those are the adjustments that i would make extra um and then i liked it so much Sandra, i'm doing a vlog baby come on i liked it so much i went straight ahead and cut a couple more out so i'll show you this next one uh let's go for this one this is the same hinterland dress there you can see the bias binding neck here you've got all these buttons here 
again I did the narrower ties I added the Tilly in the button Lyra pockets but this time round instead of the three quarter length sleeves as per the pattern I used a sleeve pattern piece from the Anna Allen Anthea blouse you can see how lovely and big that is and the gathers aren't just at the sleeve head but it's throughout the whole sleeve and then you've got a little um what are these called um a little cuff at the end which is really really lovely so i really like this one this fabric is a i think it's a cotton linen mix from um so much more and i'll pop up some photos of myself wearing it and then my next version is this one right here this is in the lovely popular reversible double gauze in an ochre colorway so you've got the big check one side small check on the inside again the bias binding there um and i have cut the uh, bodice on the bias front and back and then everything else is normal now where i've cut it on the bias and where it's a double gauze fabric which is quite what would I, is it quite a loose a loose weave or um anyway where I've cut it on the bias it sort of grew <laughs> but luckily it all grew one way it all grew this way so actually I've added a good inch um just by cutting it on the bias because the fabric has moved as a result of it being cut on the bias which is fine um but I didn't realize it at the time I thought I had cut one of the pieces um shorter than the other and I was about to cut it straight and then as I put the pattern piece on it and I was as I was moving the fabric it kind of all went back into place and I thought oh it must just be the bias cut that has caused it to move so I'm really really liking this colorway again Anna Allen Anthea sleeves um Anna Allen Anthea Anna Allen Anthea sleeves yep which is really really lovely and I'll pop up some photos of me wearing it and I'm not sure if I've popped up some photos of the other one. I'll pop up both the sets of photos up. And I know Atelier Brunette has recently um, released their double gauze fabric, which looks exactly the same. So this isn't the Atelier Brunette. This is just the normal double gauze gingham that was going around last year. I think First for Fabric still have them at like 13 pounds a meter compared to the atelier brunette which in my opinion looks exactly the same they do have other colorways that the other that this sort of selection doesn't have so i think they have like a rust and like a bottle green that this selection didn't have but that's 20 pounds a meter so if you're willing to spend that much money on essentially the same fabric then obviously that's your choice to do so this is that one very very happy with that one so that's my hinterland dress um, and also this um, gingham one was my en first entry for so yellow for endo which unfortunately i didn't win anything <laughs> this time round um so that's that one um so hinterland dress and then i went on to make another entry for so yellow for endo because i had the fabric and i've been quite enjoying actually looking through my stash and trying to use up my fabric and i had this um let me show you this fabric here this dress here i have this beautiful cotton lawn from lady McElroy, which i bought not this christmas but last christmas in the sale and it had just been sitting in my stash and i thought you know it's a perfect summery fabric to wear to make up and yellow so great for so yellow for endo and this one here is just my lyra dress so you've got the collar here button placket up to the here short sleeves um i add ties the lyra dress does have a waist tie but it's not attached at the um side it's a tie that you tie away all the way around and then you put belt loops in pockets and two tiered skirt i'll pop up some photos of me wearing it and the lyra dress i'm sure you all know of the lyra dress tilly and the buttons lyra dress my favorite shirt dress i think i've made this is probably my 10th or 11th um, version now as you can see you can just and um, you've got the short sleeves you've got the long sleeves and you've got the elasticated cuff um, you've got two tiers which you can play around with um, button stand and collar collar stand and collar element um, and this goes from a size 1 to UK 6 to UK 24 although the, all their patterns got to a 32 now but this particular um, size band goes from a UK 6 bust of 30 waist of 24 to a uk 24 bust of 48 waist of 42 and this normally takes about three meters for me obviously slightly less if it's short sleeve and i really really love this dress i've made so many so that's that one uh and then the next dress that i made which i haven't made before but i have wanted to make for a while is the um 
by Hand London Tamsin dress. Um, I'll pop up a photo actually of the inspiration, well it's not the inspiration photo, it's the photo on their website of it and I just think this is so beautiful, it's just so elegant and flowy and feminine even though it's not fitted, like it's quite a loose fit on her, I just really really love that style. Um, but I was thinking obviously I'm looking for nursing dresses and that you can't nurse in that particular dress. So what I thought is because it has princess seams down the front, I could just add... Um, invisible sips which I did it was a bit tricky at first one side was quite tricky because I didn't have instructions to do it I was just doing it in my own right but then the second one turned out um was much easier to insert so this particular pattern let me show you the line drawings so it's basically a lovely square neckline you've got princess seams at the front and at the back uh, and the main I guess detail of this pattern is that you have pleats at the I'm going to call them bell sleeves because they look like a bell to me. So you've got pleats at the uh, sleeves and this kind of ends just below your elbow. And then you've got the same pleats at the bottom of the skirt. There's a tie at the back. You've got two options. You can either insert the tie in the back princess seams or insert it at the front princess seams to go around. And then it also has a square neckline. So there are the two variations. Size wise, it goes from a UK 6 bust of 30 waist of 25 all the way up to uk 24 bust of 49 and waist of 44 i made the size 10 14 can i make the size 10 14 bear, bear with me <clears throat> okay zanda 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 shh, shh, shh. okay zanda mom is not on doing a vlog at the moment can you just leave the room for two seconds please and close the door Thank you. I made the size 10 14, which is. Um, I'm surprised I made that size actually because it wouldn't have fit me. Can you. Um, let me just double check what I made. Yeah, so I made the size 10 14 um, for the bust. And then for the arm psych and the waist and the skirt, I graded down to a size, to one size down, which is the 812. And I think that fits me quite well. Again, it fits me at 33 weeks pregnant. So maybe post-pregnancy, it might be a little bit loose or it might have the right amount of ease as the designer had planned for the pattern. Um, but it's quite easy to take it in at the waist if it's too, um, you know, too billowy or too, too big in the future. Um... I really, really like this dress. I think you have to be quite patient with this because there are a lot of um, folds that you have to do. So, should I show you a pattern piece? There's a lot of folds you have to do that I've marked out with chalk and with pins. And then you're supposed to... Do you iron them over? Yeah, you're supposed to iron... Yeah, you iron them down so then it's easier to do the pleats. And it all becomes quite easy once you're doing it. So let me show you a pattern piece and I thought how am I going to get these pleats to go straight how am I get, going to get them to all be for, um, uh, consistent and actually once you've done it it's not too bad so this is the sleeve that's how big it is the bell so I would call it a bell sleeve and you've got notches on each of these sides so this is one pleat to that side one pleat to that side one pleat to that side and what I did is I've marked it with chalk on both sides because my fabric was black and yellow I had to use chalk for the black parts and pen erasable pen for the yellow parts and what I did as well is I put a pin on each side so when I folded the fabric over to iron it I literally folded it at the pins and if I do and I folded it at the pins and as the pins are straight I you know it was easier for me to get that straight line for me to iron across um, so that's I think a tip if anybody is finding it difficult to do the pleats and that's for both the sleeves obviously and the front and the back skirt and then with adding a um, invisible zip here I did buy a nine inch zip to go from this part here to the top part there and then I thought actually although a nine inch invisible zip does look quite long when you open so it does look quite long but when you open it it kind of get squashed a bit so if you're opening it for breastfeeding access it actually is quite a small gap for me anyway for easy breastfeeding access so I went for the next size up which I believe was a 16 inch um, and then I had to cut the ends a little bit so my invisible zip now goes from the 
bottom here let will show you because I, I went for this version here where the ties are at the front princess seam so my invisible zip goes from the top of this waist tie all the way to the shoulder and I've just cut the edges off and that's perfect when that opens up you know it is longer so you have a bigger gap for um, breastfeeding access which is great um and oddly enough when I connected my um after inserting the invisible zip on one on both sides when i connected my um middle bodice and uh, the side panels that for some reason the middle bodice wasn't long enough and i think maybe it's got something to do with the invisible zip but i can't quite figure out what it is but just for future i've noted for this front panel piece this front bodice piece i'm just going to add half an inch to the top of that shoulder which is you know just in case it happens again and it's just easier what i did this time around is i just did a smaller seam allowance and it and it caught it all in anyway but i don't want that to be um, a problem for next time also if you are wanting to have an invisible zip in your seams make sure you overlock all the bodice pieces at the front here before you put your invisible zips in um and that's it let me show you my version here so as you can tell it's the same lady McElroy fabric cotton lawn uh, but in the black colorway so you've got the lovely square neckline here oh i use sorry just black cotton poplin for the contrasting um square neckline and the contrasting well, it's not really contrasting it's like complementary um waist ties these are the big sleeves. You can see how big they are. And there, there, there are the pleats there. Um, my invisible zip, I can show you if I stand up. Where did it go? Uh, oh, starts at the bottom. And it goes all the way out for breastfeeding access there. Um, what else can I say? Oh, and the pleats at the bottom of the dress as well. Some pleats at the bottom of the dress there. I want to make a plain version like um i've been seeing some lovely sort of plain viscoses first for fabrics have some lovely viscose slub uh, fabric which looks like linen but is viscose and it's like 5.99 a meter lots of different colors so i'm hoping to make a plain one just so that you can see the pleats more and i think so that that detail doesn't go go away as in get lost so i'm planning to make a, um, a plain one at some point and also i have another one planned for um myself for next month which i plan to wear to my baby's christening and also my sister-in-law is expecting a baby in june so i'll probably wear it to her christening as well so that's that one i'll pop up some photos of myself wearing it and then i also took part in um so frugal this month and i was i did have three makes planned two pajama um or like loungewear sets for my boys Zander and Zachary and also a pinafore dress for my daughter Anya unfortunately the pinafore dress didn't get made so the pinafore dress was basically just a set of instructions on a website called it's always autumn and I just didn't have the time to to get it done so I'm very sorry Anya and I'm very sorry viewers if you're looking forward to that um I do have my so frugal vlog in my channel if you wanted to look at the patterns for that but I did manage to get the loungewear sets done and the pattern I went with which was the free pattern um were, were was the grow with me pajamas by Ellie and Mac which is this one here so essentially it's just a pajama set but the only difference is they have um a yoke um and um oh they have um these um cuffs at the legs are fold over so the reason is grow with me as your child gets older instead of making a new pair you can just roll them down so you have a wider cuff at the bottom i didn't bother doing the wider cuff thing i just went for the normal cuffs and also with regards to this yoke i just omitted the seam allowance between the two and cut the piece as one this goes from a child six to 12 months old all the way up to an age 14 which is great for a free pattern i have used ellie and mac before as well for their patterns that i pay for so i'm quite happy with how they draft their patterns and their instructions um and my original plan was to um upsize quite a bit and make them into sort of loungewear sets for my boys so we normally get our clothes from sort of next and they have some lovely just like sweater sweatshirts and jogging bottom sets that they just wear around the house loungewear and i thought if i use sweatshirting fabric and made it a bit looser and also added a cuff a bottom band at the bottom of the top uh, it would look more like a loungewear set 
unfortunately it still looks like pajamas and the children wear it as pajamas but it's fine and um, they are a bit warm because the fabric i chose was some lovely fleece backed um sweatshirting which i bought both bought from um pound fabrics which is really really great value so the first set i made was this one here some lovely cars for zachary for the blue cuffs and then i've added the cuff at the bottom to make it look like a sweatshirt unfortunately the top band of this was quite narrow and that's why i think it looks more pajama like uh, because of the narrow um hem and the narrow neck band uh, these are the matching um jogging bottoms or legging like pajama bottoms again i put the cuff at the bottom and it's just elasticated in there so the next time i'll pop up a photo of zachary wearing it so then when it came to doing Zander's set, um, I just made the um, I made the neck band a bit thicker. But what I didn't, um, I made it a bit thicker. And also, sorry, if you, can no if you notice, um, the, the neck hole is a bit lower and the binding, the neck band is thinner. And I just thought that made it look more pajama-like. So what I did with this one, I cut the neck hole a bit higher and I um, increased the width of the um, neckband, but obviously I didn't do it properly or because I was doing it freehand, there's just a bit of extra fabric up here. So it kind of doesn't sit very nicely on his neck. It kind of sticks out a bit, which is fine for pajamas, but I'm just saying if I was to do it again, I would make this band a bit shorter. So again, you've got the cuffs, you've got the bottom bit there and it's a lovely, sorry, it's a lovely fleece back um sweatshirting so this isn't as thick as the other one let me show you the other one it's like <laughs> lovely look at that it's like a lovely fleece back and they've worn this several times already um and then the matching trousers to sander's set are here fabric is all from pound fabrics and i'll pop up a photo of zander wearing his and then the two boys together as well um and so frugal um, submissions are today, 31st of April, 30 days of April, 30th of April, <laughs> 30th of April, 30th of March, 31st of March, that's right. Um, and so that's that. I also made a couple of items for new baby. I'm expecting a baby boy at the end of April. Um, these, this is the um, Brindle and Twig, um, I think they're called... It's a baby grow, but I'll pop up the pattern. Uh, and I've made this lovely set here with fold over cuffs, fold over cuffs. Um, it's got some um, rib jersey, grey rib jersey, and then I've got snaps from Prim. And then it's got the grey at the bottom for the feet. That comes with a matching hat. Um, it's just what are these called? I'm not sure what these hats are called. Top tie hats. And the fabric was from Jelly Fabrics. And I'll pop up a photo of it. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough fabric to make a blanket because I have also in the past made a jogging set and a sweatshirt, which I haven't shown you before. And then I made this and I didn't have enough um, because I didn't cut it out properly. I didn't use it economically enough. I didn't have enough to cut a blanket out, which is what I wanted to do. And Jelly Fabrics has sold out and you can't get this fabric anywhere else, which is really unfortunate. So that's just that without a blanket. <laughs> and then the next set I made was um, this set here with the blue ribbing. Fold over cuffs again here. Blue at the bottom. Prim snaps. It's very cute with a matching hat, which I cannot find now, or matching hat. And then I did have enough fabric to make a matching blanket. And I have just backed it with some vintage blue dimple fleece from Pound Fabrics. This fabric was just in my stash, but I believe it was from either Little Legs or Jelly Fabrics. Um, and um, what else was I gonna say? Pop up a photo of the set. I also made a similar set, but in different fabric for um, my husband's cousin's baby that was born at the, on the, at the beginning of March. And I'll pop up a photo of that. I don't have that to show you because I've already given it to her. And I also made a, another pair of dungarees. Um, I'll pop up a photo of the dungarees. This was just fabric from Pound Fabrics. It's their canvas floral fabric. 
and um, again I've given it that was to my goddaughter so I gave it to her last week so I don't have it to I don't have it to show you but that particular pattern is the peekaboo okidoki overalls which is really great and the reason I went for this particular overalls there are a lot of overall patterns online but this just to me looks exactly like a ready to wear item and I love making clothes that look like they were bought from the shops so anyway I went for this one three months to 12 years great instructions I have made this before and I have reviewed it before and my review wasn't that good because I found the instructions I found that it skipped a lot of steps <laughs> but now that I've made it a second time I realize it was my fault that it skipped a lot of it didn't actually skip a lot of steps it's just that I had um lost a pattern piece um not I mean it still worked without that pattern piece and so I was just confused that they were referring to something that I didn't have and there were the pictures were reflecting something that my item didn't look like and so that's why I thought it was a bit confusing but really it's because I'd forgotten a piece but overall a great pattern to go with and my hardware that I used for my ones were from Kylie and the Machines which is actually quite expensive I think they're 10 11 pounds for the set but they're the only ones that I could find that had more than two buttons um, so you know you normally get the buckles and you get two buttons for this bit here um, but um, for this particular pattern you need buttons for the side as well and then you would have to buy that extra if you were buying it from every, anywhere else and also I really like the colourways of the metal hardware that they had and I think that is it, that is all that I have done hopefully I haven't missed anything out so that's all I've done in the month of March um, April is going to be not as busy Although myself, Adele, Sofa Serenity and Claire Stitchham So are hosting Selfless So April 23 again this year. Lots of sponsors, over 50 sponsors this year. Um, I would be doing a separate vlog on Selfless So April. But essentially it's just um, making something that's not for yourself. So it's a present for friends, family, charity, your pets. You can do accessories. And make it in the month of April. Post it under the hashtag Selfless so April 23 at the end of April. Which I I believe is 30th of April and um, there will be prizes for circuits first second and third place for each category and then the rest of the winners will be chosen at random because we have so many prizes and the categories are menswear ladies wear children's naught to two children's two years plus pets and accessories um, and there'll be lots of information on that on my Instagram page as well at my social thread and as I say um, I will be doing a separate vlog on this. There is a vlog tour this year. Um, so I think there's about 30 to 30 to 35 vloggers that are each doing inspiration vlogs daily for the month of April for us which is lovely thank you so much for your support and I will be announcing all of those on Instagram and also my YouTube page so please do follow me on Instagram and like and subscribe to this channel if um, you like my content thank you so much to everyone for watching and have a good day take care bye bye